Hi everybody, it's Kent here from Plugins 4D. Today I'm going to show you the update for Jet Fluids 0.11. And if we just come up to the Plugins 4D menu under Fluids, you're going to see that the solvers are all gone. I removed the solvers because it now makes sense just to add them just from the scene. And you've also still got that test scene because that's in a lot of other videos. But if you just add the scene, now you can add your solver. So what we're going to do here is add a PCI SPH and then we'll add a sphere under that. And one of the fixes here is that if you have the PCI SPH or SPH solvers, you can now uncheck this box and it will remove it from the viewport because it's just not really required. And I'm just going to now set up a little simple scene here with a couple of cubes just so we can collide this with it. So I have my cube here. I'm just working through this because a lot of people have actually just asked me how to do some of these kind of things. So I thought I'd just show it in a quick video how to set up something very, very simple. And now I select this cube and tilt it in a bit and select this cube and tilt it in a bit. And now I'm going to move that sphere just back a bit. So the fluid's going to flow down into this and then down, down that gap there on these two cubes. So to do that, we just need to put these under the scene and add a collider tag to them. And before I begin, what I'm going to also do is do another little setup. So these particle-based fluids, such as PCIH, SPH, FLIP, PIC, and APIC, they all produce um, points. And so we can actually use those points with a volume builder and a volume mesher. So I'm going to put a volume builder under here and a volume mesher. And to set this up, to make it work, you just need to select the volume builder and then select the PCIH, PCI SPH solver here and turn on use mesh points. Now, if you're using the previous builds of Jet Fluids, then this would not have been enabled initially, like I'm doing now. It was only available after you had cached. So uh, that's kind of a fix as well. I've enabled that. Now, the last thing we need to do here is change these uh, sizes. And you should use the size for this particular solver from the target spacing. If you're using one of the Flip Pickle Apex, one of these other ones, then uh, you can use the cell size. So I'm just grabbing that number and I'm putting it in here. And I'm also going to set the voxel size up there. Uh, and now I can actually simulate this. And if I click on the solver, and then I click Start Caching, you're now also going to notice that... Oh, I need to set this to Continuous. But you're also going to notice that when I started that simulation, it immediately unchecked these. It uh, disabled them. And I've done that for stability and also just for speed, because we don't want the CPUs to be doing anything else uh, that's going to slow down the simulation. You might as well let the simulation run as fast as it can without bogging it down with Mesh Builder doing a lot of computation. So when you click Start Caching, if this is under a Volume Builder or a Volume Mesher, it will disable both of them. And then when you finish caching, you just enable them again. But I'm going to start caching again first by going to that solver, or that emitter, and change it to constant. And now I'm, well, I'll just demonstrate that again. You can actually see the particles there. But if I just clear that and start, now we're going to have a constant fluid going in there, and you can see that those are disabled as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the simulation run right to the end, because people have also been asking, how long do my simulations take to run? And so the best way I can show that is just, just look at my screen here. If you want to pause the video or fast forward between when I started and when it ends in the 90 frames, you can uh, check that out yourself. But if you also are doing any simulations, you can come up under console, and you can click on jet fluids. and you can see for yourself how long it might be taking. So here I'm getting, now I'm getting about one second per frame almost. And at the end of the simulation, this will also uh, give, I believe, a total amount of time it took to simulate. So let's just let this leave this running here, um, just so we can get this full information for you all, so you can see how long it takes. And this is a Intel i7 10 core machine, so um, 20 threads, and it's about uh, five or six years old, this machine. This machine. So there you can see uh, the end simulation took 57 seconds. So that took roughly one minute to simulate this entire fluid simulation. And if I rewind it, I can play it back now using the fake particles. Now just before I turn on these meshes, I also want to show another improvement I've made. So now you can see that you're getting the full gradient of that fake particle simulation. Uh, going through here. So if I come on to the SPCH solver, click on display, open that particle color up and just choose any of these other gradients, you can now see that you're getting the full color. So 
that was a uh, wasn't working in the previous build. Previously, it was locked to like the height of the bounding box, which you don't need when you disable it. So now you can use that to get a full range of color from the top to the bottom of your simulations, just for just for visualizing it really. But now we really want this to be um, using the mesher. So I'm going to enable the volume builder. Now, first thing you'll also notice here is that the fake particles are gone. So they're no longer being rendered. So it just saves a little bit of computational time and update time in the viewport and also helps with stability as well. And there's the voxels. So that's pure voxels there. And if we turn on the mesher, we are now going to get the liquid. So let me just add a material to that so that we can see it from the cubes. And so that's our fluid there. And if we just let that play, we're going to see that it's, it's it's not looking that great. But that's where the power of these uh, volumes come into play. So you can add things to this, like uh, open and close. And it'll try and fill up the gaps there. We can run that for a few iterations to get a kind of smoother looking fluid. You can also add options from here. You can add these and drag them underneath the volume builder as well and there's also other options in here for smoothing as well just best just to watch the tutorial on using the volume mesher and the volume builder and you'll be able to get the kind of look that you're after now i haven't actually shown this technique before in any of my other videos which is why i decided to do it now and again just to recap you just click on your volume builder click on your solver enable the mesh points and then set the mesh point radius and then also update that voxel size as well and then you can use any of the ones that produce points and the ones that will produce points is this PCI SPH solver the flip pick APIC SPH and, and the one we just mentioned and with any of those solvers they uh, default to particles the display type uh, mesh is only used really by level set liquid and it should probably be removed from these other ones because I'm not producing a mesh I was contemplating doing it but I think it's just better just to use these uh, volume meshes and do this technique but if you were to set this to volume as before it will produce a volume and then you can uh, use that volume straight in the volume builder and you, you won't need to do that technique that I just mentioned this also all everything I've mentioned here works with caching so if external uh, set that to an external cache and uh, simulate this it writes out c4d files for every single frame and that's just point information uh, but if you write out the volume, then it will put out a VDB file for every single frame. And again, there's been improvements in that area just to ensure that the stability of the system is working when you're doing lots of simulations and trying to uh, just do some experimenting. Okay, I hope this build is a lot more stable for you all and that you can uh, start creating some interesting fluid simulations. Thanks. Cheers.